What's going on, gardeners? It's Saturday, February 4th, and it is absolutely freezing here today on the southeastern coast of North Carolina, but spring is on its way. And today's video is a video that many of you have asked me to make. On this video, I'm going to share with all of you every single variety of tomato that I'm growing this season. That includes the new varieties that I'm growing for the first time, the old varieties that I've grown before but I think are good enough to warrant growing again, and I will explain to you why I'm growing them all. On this video, I'm going to share with you imagery of each individual packet of seeds so you can see with your own eyes exactly where I bought all of this seed. But I'm also going to drop a link down in the video description for a short video on where I like to buy my seed. They are not the only places online that you could buy seed, but they're my favorite places where I've had great experiences. Make sure you stay until the end because at the end I'm going to show you a full chart of every single variety that I'm growing and how many of each plant I'm planning to grow. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing and hitting the bell to receive new video notifications and check out our Amazon storefront and spread shop in the video description for a list of the gardening products I use and awesome custom designed apparel and other gear, your support is greatly appreciated. We're going to begin this video with my cherry type tomatoes. And the first three that I'm going to touch on are varieties that I've grown before with great success. They are the Super Sweet 100, Sun Gold, and Sun Sugar varieties. They're all fantastic for their own reasons. Super Sweet 100 is the most vigorous tomato that I've ever grown and the yields are incredible and they're super disease resistant. So that's why I'm growing this again. Sun Gold, while not nearly as vigorous and productive, is the best tasting cherry tomato that I've ever had in my entire life. It may be the best tasting tomato I've ever had in my entire life. So this will always get a spot in my garden until the day comes when I find a better one, which may never happen. And then I have Sun Sugar. The reason why I'm growing Sun Sugar is it's basically a larger, more vigorous and disease resistant version of Sun Gold, but I'd say it's about 80% as good in terms of taste. However, the larger size and the increased vigor is why I'm growing it because when sun gold starts to fail and split with the heavy rains and die back, the sun sugar will keep producing for a while. Now let's discuss the new cherry tomato varieties that I'm growing for the first time ever. The first one that I'm growing here is the Sun Chocola or Sun Chocola variety. I'm not exactly sure how you say it. This is supposed to be a purplish red smoky tomato. Now last year I grew black cherry because I wanted a purple cherry tomato and it just wasn't a good performer. It had a terrible disease resistant package. It just split very easily and it died a very young death. So that's not appropriate for my climate. I'm hoping this variety of cherry right here is a little hardier and a little tougher. I've heard great things about it. We're going to give it a try and see how it handles the coastal southeast. Then we have Unicorn Hybrid, and this one is one that I'm very excited about. This is a red cherry tomato, and what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to find a variety of tomato to replace Super Sweet 100. While I really like Super Sweet 100, it's exactly like the name says. It's super sweet. It doesn't really have any more complex flavors, and this one is supposed to have a better sugar to acid balance because I really like a punchy acidic tomato. Now this supposedly has a very good disease resistance package. I'm going to grow them side by side because I want to find a red cherry tomato that tastes a little better than Super Sweet 100 and can also compete with its disease package. It may not exist, but I'm going to give it a try. And the last cherry type that I'm going to grow is Black Plum. Why am I growing black plum? Because tomato growers sent it to me for free because I reached a certain dollar amount in my order and I can't say no to a free tomato. So I'm going to grow a plant and I'm gonna see how it performs. Maybe it does well. Maybe it's the greatest tomato I've ever grown. Maybe it's a dud, but I can't say no to a free tomato. Next up, we're going to discuss determinate tomato varieties, and it starts with two that I've been growing for years. They are Celeste and Bella Rosa. Celeste was bred for the cool climate of the Pacific Northwest. It's named after the town Celeste, Oregon, where it basically never really gets above 70 degrees much uh, in their summers outside of the odd heat event. So while no tomato is tolerant of frost, this one actually likes cool temperatures. So nights in the 39, 40 degree range don't bother it at all. And it actually starts suffering greatly once temperatures get into the 80s. So it really loves temperatures 
in the 50s, 60s, and 70s, and it's always one of the first slicing size tomatoes to ripen in my garden. What's also great about it is the flavor develops really well even in cool weather where a lot of larger tomatoes will not develop good flavor until it gets plenty hot out. But the goal of this tomato is to be very early and have a really good tasting large early tomato. Bella Rosa, on the other hand, is a more traditional tomato. It's a standard beefsteak slash slicing tomato with typical red tomato flavor. However, what sets this apart from the pack is its incredible disease resistance. These plants are incredibly tough. They perform very well in my climate. They're also very split resistant. So they're one of the only varieties of tomato that will actually hold up to the rains here. So for that reason, it has the perfect package of disease resistance, split resistance, humidity tolerance, so it's one of the few beefsteak type tomatoes that can actually extend its life into the summer here somewhat. So that's why I grow this variety. Now let's discuss the new varieties of determinate tomatoes that I'm growing for the first time this year. The first one is one of the tomato varieties I'm most excited about, and this is the Celebrity Plus Hybrid. And I've been singing the praises of Celebrity for years. It's one of my favorite all-time tomatoes. I used to work on a farm in New Jersey where all the farmer grew with celebrities. They are just incredible, incredible producers. Now what makes this variety Celebrity Plus is it also adds resistance to tomato spotted wilt virus, which is another part of the disease package that the original Celebrity does not have. So apparently this is supposed to have the same great quality fruit, but with additional disease resistance. The next variety that I'm growing this year is Laroma 3, which is a plum type tomato or a San Marzano type tomato. Uh, last year I grew Margarita Hybrid, and while they were were some of the toughest, most productive, determinate plants I've ever seen in my life. They didn't have the world's greatest flavor. They were good, but I wasn't blown away by them. This is supposed to have a similar disease package, so I'm on a quest to find the best Roma tomato overall. Then finally, we have Legend. This is bred by the same breeding program as Celets. It's supposed to be a very similar tomato, but it's supposed to have additional disease resistance properties. While Celets, I do love it, it has absolutely horrific disease susceptibility. It's one of the first tomatoes to die in my garden. Partially that's because it is so early, but it's also because it just struggles with any type of heat and humidity. So you really have to get it in early when you live in the coastal southeast. So Legend is supposed to be very similar, but it's supposed to be a tougher plant. We're going to put it to the test. Now we'll discuss the paste type indeterminate tomatoes that I'm growing this year. And I have Pisano, Jersey Devil, and Ceylon. And I grew all of these last year. I'm not growing any new paste type indeterminates this season. And all of these I think are good enough to warrant growing again. Ceylon is a very small paste type tomato. It's almost, uh, it's like twice the size of a cherry tomato. It is incredibly productive and I was impressed by not only the productivity, but the stoutness of the vine. So it definitely is worth growing again. Pisano, I had a little bit of issue with blossom end rot last year. It's the only tomato I've had blossom end rot issues with for years. So I'm going to work on some irrigation practices and some mulching practices this year, and I'm going to give it another shot. It was a very productive plant. And then Jersey Devil. The reason why I'm growing Jersey Devil is it's one of the best tasting Roma type or paste type tomatoes I've ever had. It's very difficult to grow. It is disease susceptible. It struggles mightily in my climate, but it tastes so good that I'm growing it for the third year in a row because I just can't get over how good the tomato is and it's worth struggling even if I only get six to eight tomatoes off the plant. Now we'll discuss everybody's favorite tomatoes, the indeterminate beefsteak tomatoes. And I'm going to start off with three tomatoes that I've been growing for years and years. They are the Brandywine Yellow, specifically the Platfoot strain, the Big Brandy Hybrid, and the Brandy Boy Hybrid. Now you may be sensing a theme here. I really like the Brandywine types, but they suffer mightily where I live on the southeastern coast of North Carolina. The reason why I suffer through growing Brandywine Yellow is despite its problems with productivity and disease susceptibility and the overall struggle of keeping it alive. It's probably the best tasting beefsteak tomato I've ever had in my entire life. It is just incredible. It is creamy. It is well balanced. It is huge. They are beautiful fruits when they finally do set and I can't say enough great things about it. 
other than the fact that the plants are not very strong. Then I have Big Brandy and Brandy Boy, and these are both hybrid takes on the infamous Brandywine Sodeth strain, which is the pink Brandywine. What I found is that the hybridized Brandywines, these two specifically, are very good takes on the heirloom, and they're 90 to 95% as good. They're very difficult to tell apart in terms of taste. However, they are far more productive and disease resistant. So for that reason, I've pretty much given up just growing the old heirloom brandy wine. It's just not worth it because these hybrids are so good and so close that I just like growing them because they're better plants. Two more varieties that I've grown before are Big Beef and Arkansas Traveler. Big Beef is easily one of the most productive hybrid beefsteak tomatoes I've ever grown, and the flavor is excellent, the fruits are perfect. It's such an incredible radical performer that I can't really imagine not growing it in my garden. It's just too good. If, you're, if you think you're not a fan of hybrid tomatoes, try growing Big Beef because it will impress you. Now, Arkansas Traveler, on the other hand, this is the only heirloom that seems to survive in my garden. I will say the flavor is kind of mediocre. It's not particularly fantastic, but it has incredible yields of four to six ounce slicing tomatoes with good flavor and the hardiness of the plants and the disease resistance for an heirloom is pretty incredible. So I like growing one because it's a really reliable producer. Then we have a variety right here called Lucid Gem. And this is one of those, hey, look at me, I'm a really pretty variegated, funny looking tomato. I wanted to grow this as a novelty, even though these novelty striped pretty looking tomatoes usually don't do too well where I live. Well, this one was a stunner of a a performer. It was very disease resistant. The plant grew huge. It produced a ton of fruit and it had the ability to set fruit even in June and July here where most other varieties didn't. So for that reason, I'm going to grow it again. I was blown away that a variegated novelty tomato like this was so reliable and so tough. And it also tasted pretty good too. The one new beefsteak variety of tomato that I'm growing in my garden this year is a variety called Carmelo. And the reason why I decided to grow this variety is because, well, retail therapy is a real thing. Don't let the hoodie and the hat confuse you. I am actually not a fashionista. I don't buy really expensive shoes and really expensive clothes. However, I still like going shopping for certain things. One of my favorite things to do is to browse through seed websites and seed catalogs and look at all the pretty pictures and read all of the descriptions. And I like picking one or two that I just like looking at the photo and I just get taken away by the description. It just, it makes me feel good. And I decided on a whim I was going to grow this one because I thought it looked the best and it had the best write-up on it. Will it actually be good? I don't know. It says it produces heavy clusters of round fruit on strong, uniform plants. And it's an F1 ready in 70 days. So that's early. And if it's disease resistant and productive and it tastes good, that's all I can ask for. So I'm going to give this a shot and hopefully it's a winner. And the final topic that we'll cover are the dwarf tomato project varieties that I'm growing this year. And I have five that I've grown before that I'm growing again and one new one. These two are varieties that I've grown in the past, Rosella Purple and Dwarf Emerald Giant. The reason why I keep growing these year after year is because they are consistently not only the two best tasting dwarf tomatoes I've ever had, but maybe the best two tomatoes I've ever had, period. If I had to give you my four best tasting tomatoes, they would be Sun Gold, Rosella Purple, Dwarf Emerald Giant, and Brandywine Yellow. They're the four best I've ever had, so I can't not grow these. Now, Rosella Purple is very disease susceptible, and it likes to be planted as early as possible, and it wants to ripen when it's still cool in the spring, at least here where I live. It does not handle the high temperatures well. Dwarf Emerald Giant, on the other hand, is a much tougher, hardier plant. They get really big. They have ginormous stalks. Uh, they take a lot longer to ripen, and the fruits are huge, but man, are they delicious. If you like acidic tomatoes, wow, just wow, blows you away. Then we have three more that I've grown before. They are Adelaide Festival, Rosella Crimson, and Tasmanian Chocolate. I enjoyed all of them. Adelaide Festival, I've been growing for probably five or six years. It's a beautiful, delicious, variegated tomato. It's one of the best dwarf tomato project varieties, in my opinion. And Tasmanian Chocolate was very good, and so was Rosella Crimson. I've had some issues with disease on Rosella Crimson, so I'm going to keep trying to modify my environment to keep them a little drier this year and I'll see how they perform. And then the one new variety that I'm growing this year that's a dwarf tomato is Purple Rain. This is obviously a purple tomato. It's just really cool and interesting looking. It's uh, It kind of looks like that mushroom basket tomato, but 
purplish. So this one got me by the picture. I'm going to give this a try as well and we'll see how it handles my climate. And as promised, here is a chart of every single variety of tomato that I'm growing. This is how I plan my garden every single year with every species of plant that I grow for my annual vegetable garden. I lay them all out in Excel and then I come up with quantities that fit in my beds easily. And this is my garden plan. So hopefully this will help you as well. Now, if you've been following my garden for a few years now, you may be asking to yourself, hey, what happened to all of those chef's choice varieties of tomatoes that you were raving about? And well, I've just pretty much given up on them because they get 90% of the way to being ripe and then the rains come in my climate and they just, I wind up losing most of the fruit. They are incredibly stout plants. They're beautiful, they're disease resistant, they're highly productive, but they so closely approximate the heirloom strains that they have that thin skin that split on me at the first sign of rain. And they're just not early enough for me to get ripe in late May before the really heavy rain starts. So while the handful of tomatoes that I get off the plants are delicious, they just don't work out for me. So until I can develop a way to keep my tomato plants dry so the rain doesn't harm them, I can't really grow varieties like that, unfortunately. However, if you don't have the problems with the wet summers that I have, or you have something like a high tunnel to grow them in, they are all fantastic performers. And that right there is every single variety of tomato that I'm growing in my tomato garden this year, at least so far. It is entirely possible that I may still decide to add a variety or two because I just have some weird addiction to buying seeds. I just can't stop. So I may add one or two more things, but this is going to be at least 95% of what I'm growing. So if you have any questions about any of these varieties, please ask them down in the comments section and I will do my best to answer those comments to the best of my ability. And and like I said, I will also drop a link down in the video description to all of my favorite places to buy seed. So everybody, I sure hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please make sure to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and please ring that notification bell so you're notified when we release more videos like these. If you're curious about any of the products that I use in my garden in real life, they are all linked in my Amazon storefront down in the video description. So expand that, click on the Amazon link to see everything I use in real life. And while you're there, check out my spread shop for custom merch. If you'd like to support the channel. Thank you all so much for watching and I hope to see all of you again on the next video. Now I'm going inside because it is freezing. Wow Dale, you have some monster forearms on you. Look at those guns. Holy moly, you don't even work out. Boy, I have to do all these pull-ups and your forearms are bigger than mine. That's not fair. That's just genetics right there, buddy. Genetics and a good diet. See, that's, uh, that's where I lack. I don't have strong genetics and I just ate a Cinnabon. So, you know, I'll never be Jack like Dale.